Hey everybody, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. Today we're going to cap off our pan and box break series by adding slats to the sheet metal box we installed in the trailer. The slats are going to complete the enclosure and provide that final touch. So stick around, I'll see you right after this. Okay guys, in how to use a pan and box brake part two, we installed a metal box, also called a louver, into the side of this trailer to act as a vent for the gigantic fume extractor inside. But we're not quite finished yet. We have to add slats to the box to complete the enclosure. The slats will open as the exhaust fumes are expelled from the opening and fall to a closed position when the fume extractor is shut off. The process of making the slats wasn't as complicated as the box itself but it still demanded the use of the pan and box brake along with some welding reinforcements. When marking out the shape of the slats from a piece of sheet metal, I like to use a metal scribe and a speed square to mark it out as I can slide the square down the length of the measurements as it drags the scribe along. Of course, this only works if the distance from the edge is seven inches or less because that's the max length of the speed square. After cutting out the slats, I mosey on over to the pan and box brake to add what you call a hem to one edge of the slat. All a hem is, is a fold, a tight fold, like a hem on a pant leg or a shirt sleeve. This fold not only makes the edge have a neater, cleaner appearance, but in the case of the slat, it also provides more weight to the unhinged edge, allowing it to fall quickly and securely. I'm getting ready to attach aluminum rods to the slats, which are also aluminum. I'm gonna use a TIG welder to achieve this, and it's much easier when the metal alloys match. The slats will swing on these rods, so I have to make sure the welds are strong. When TIG welding, it's very important to clean the metal thoroughly. A wire brush and some simple green solution should do the trick when it comes to cleaning. It doesn't hurt to sharpen the tungsten either and wipe down the filler rod to get rid of contaminants or impurities that will definitely ruin your welds. I fastened the rod to the slat using mini vice grips and made sure the spacing of the wells were far enough apart to provide adequate support without warping the metal due to the heat. Of course, that would depend on the amperage settings, which was about 40 to 50 amps. The metal was too thin for me to go higher than that. I'm using a tap and die set to tap out the ends of the rods because I'm going to use screws to attach the slats to the box. Basically, I'm creating a thread in the end of the rod. The rods were already hollow to begin with, so it made it a lot easier. By the way, the tap forms the female end, meaning the opening, which is what I'm doing here. And the die forms the male, like the threads on a screw or bolt.
Here, I'm drilling out holes into which screws will be inserted. Those same screws will be screwed into the ends of the slat rods. The holes will be wide enough to allow the screws to rotate freely. So when the exhaust fumes hit the slats, they will open and close without obstruction. I had to figure out a way to keep the edges of the slats from scraping or contacting the side walls of the box, so I installed washers between the slat rod ends and the box to maintain that spacing. Okay guys, tell me in the comments if you learned anything about pan and box brakes, TIG welding, tap and die sets. Let me know. Hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.